Len, many physicists talk about a theory of everything, try to encapsulate all the laws of physics in one, uh, in one theory. Uh, what has been the history of this? You, you've been a physicist, you came to Caltech in the early 80s. Uh, what was it like then, and how can you trace uh, our understanding of the, the search for the theory of everything? Well, the, 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 big fr the first person who was really passionate about the theory of everything was Einstein, mm -hmm. right? and he called it the unified field theory. Mm -hmm. And back then, uh, everything was just gravity and electromagnetism. And actually, when he was uh, working on gravity, it had just been a few decades earlier that electricity and magnetism were united by Maxwell in the late 19th right. century. And, and Einstein came up with a theory of gravity, and he wanted to put electromagnetism with it. And then he wanted to make it quantum when quantum theory came. And, and then the nuclear forces were discovered, the strong and weak force. And he thought that every, there should be one unified theory. And Einstein was very philosophical, as you know. And uh, he felt that was the beautiful, the beauty of nature, and that the old man would do it that way, <laughs> meaning God. But yeah. Einstein didn't believe in yeah. the biblical God, but, but in just the unity of nature. Mm -hmm. And physicists, ironically, didn't care much for that approach. And uh, no one worked much on the theory of everything until in the, in the, in the late 60s, the electro, uh, electromagnetism and the weak interaction were united, and people started getting really excited about uniting all the forces. Well, and what does it mean, unite? Well, what it means is to have one set of equations that, that describe the different forces as facets of the same thing. And so, for instance, with electricity and magnetism, um, before Maxwell, there were electric phenomena and magnetic phenomena, and you could see that how currents could cause magnetism and how magnetism can cause currents, but no one quite understood them in a, in a, in a unified manner. And then Maxwell came up with this electromagnetic field, which Einstein then showed uh, actually electricity and magnetism, uh, what, what, what's electricity and what's magnetism is different to different observers. Mm. And he came up with one theory that, that showed how, they, how it all comes from the same framework. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then with weak interactions, we see that, that, that how that framework encompasses all three of those. Weak interactions again in the nucleus. In the nucleus, yeah. 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 People wanted one, one framework that showed how everything really are, you know, they might look different to us for, and, and explains why, but for, they're, they're really facets of the same thing. And uh, so there was a big push for that. And in the 70s, this new theory called string theory was uh, invented and, and pretty much discarded. When I got here in the early 80s, there were only a few people in the world working on string theory, and uh, John Schwartz here at Caltech was one of them. And people gave him a hard time. Uh, for instance, uh, Richard Feynman would see him in the halls and say, hey, John, how many dimensions are we in today? <laughs> because string theory, as you right. know, uh, ha uh, predicts different dimensions. And... He was really uh, working almost alone uh, because he felt uh, that this was beautiful and this could explain uh, the force of nature and that gravity came out of this theory. Uh, and it predicted, in a sense, gravity, even though some people say post dicted because we already knew about gravity. <laughs> but ironically, Feynman, who was an uh, icon in physics, uh, did, well, you know, did not believe in looking for a theory of everything. If you ask Feynman about it, he would get all agitated and go, theory of everything, why should there be a theory of everything? Why, you know, we're imposing our idea of beauty on physics. Mm. Nature tells us what physics is, we don't mm. tell nature. Mm. Maybe there's four separate forces, maybe mm. they're not united, why should they be united? Mm. And so he was one of the ones who gave John especially a hard time. Mm. And of course the, the rest is history because uh, uh, John made some, uh, along with Michael Green, made some real, pro real great progress uh, and string theory has blossomed since then, and, and now uh, most uh, people working on the fundamental forces of nature uh, work on string theory, and, and the idea is to have one theory that, that can explain everything. But let me also say, when a physicist says everything, that's not the same as when an, a, a lay person thinks of everything. This is not going to explain consciousness. It's not going to explain even how two billiard balls collide, because the theory of everything, or, or, or the fundamental theory of nature, uh, is, is going to be something probably, and, and certainly the four separate or, or the separate theories that we have today are of this nature, that, 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 that you can apply to very simple systems of a couple particles, a few particles interacting, but we don't directly use that to, do, to, to, to calculate how billiard balls collide. When we do that, we're still going to use Newton's laws as, as we've been doing right. since Newton. So the theory of everything is not going to tell, tell you how to make a toaster. <laughs> it's just going to tell us, give us a deeper understanding of the fundamental forces of, of nature. But for the phenomenological uh, macroscopic uh, world, or even for water waves or transistors, 
uh, and, and, and a GPS system that we use in all our technology, we're pretty much going to still use the <laughs> theories that we use today, and they, they work very right. well. Right. What is your gut feeling about a theory of everything? <laughs> is it going to happen? My gut feeling is not worth very much. Uh, I, uh, w- w- back in the 80s, when uh, the first string theory revolution came, I felt that uh, we were getting close to... Uh, to, to something, uh, to, you know, to, to having something. And, and then there was another revolution in string theory in the 90s when M-theory came. And again, there was a lot of excitement. And it's about 15, 17 years since then. And uh, now uh, theories are older. <laughs> I'm older. <laughs> and I, I would not predict that in my lifetime that I would, I would see that. And I don't know whether um, that's the right track or not. It's, um, you know, physicists historically have a very bad track record in predicting uh, uh, the future, the future of physics. 